Hello, doctor, moving better. I've improved since I had my stroke. But my shoulder has started hurting again. It feels different this time. I hear you, Sarah. Shoulder pain is the most common type of pain after stroke. It's frustrating, it slows recovery, and it often shows up in the first few months, but it can return later for new reasons. I really want to understand what's causing the pain and what I can do about it. You're asking the right question. Today, I'll walk you through 12 common causes of post-stroke shoulder pain and the clues that help tell them apart. Then, in a follow-up video, Part 2 will go over relief strategies you can safely try at home. Before we get into the causes, it helps to know why shoulder pain is so common after stroke. The shoulder is one of the most mobile and least stable joints in the body. After a stroke, that balance between movement and stability changes dramatically. Here's what happens. First, weakness and loss of control in the rotator cuff and scapular muscles allow the joint to drift out of alignment. Second, abnormal muscle tone or spasticity pulls the arm inward and downward, stressing tendons and ligaments. Third, reduced sensation or neglect means small injuries go unnoticed until pain appears. Add limited movement or poor arm support and you have the perfect setup for shoulder pain after stroke. To summarize what you just said, changes that take place after stroke make the shoulder more susceptible to pain. So what are the 12 causes? We can divide the 12 causes into three categories. The first involves instability and how the arm is handled. When stabilizing muscles are weak, the ball of the shoulder partly slips out of its socket, what we call subluxation. Like a partial dislocation? Exactly. The shoulder looks lower or the arm feels heavy when upright. Support and alignment matter early to prevent strain. The second problem comes from pulling on the weak arm during transfers or overhead exercises, which can overstretch tissues. You'll feel pain that starts after transfers or when the arm was lifted by someone else. I remember that happened to me a few times during transfers, after I had my stroke. It's common and preventable when the arm is supported properly. Next are the soft tissue causes, tendons, bursa, and joint capsules that get irritated by poor mechanics. The first set of problems here have to do with the rotator cuff, impingement, and bursitis. Pain occurs with overhead reach or lifting to the side, a painful mid-range arc, and night pain when lying on that shoulder. Another soft tissue joint causes frozen shoulder. Limited motion leads the capsule to tighten. I've heard of that. The shoulder is really stiff, painful, and can't be moved. Exactly. Range of motion is restricted in every direction, especially external rotation. You feel stiffness in the shoulder in every direction, with deep aching. The biceps can also cause shoulder pain. The long head of the biceps runs through a narrow groove at the front of the shoulder that can get irritated with altered movement. You'll feel pain in the front groove of the shoulder, worse with bending the elbow or holding the hand out and turning the palm upward. On your shoulder, there is a small bump. That's called the AC joint. If that's the source of pain, You'll feel point tenderness on top and pain when reaching across the chest, like fastening a seat belt. Finally, sometimes calcium builds up on the rotator cuff tendons. This can cause sharp inflammation. 
Here you feel sudden, severe night pain and a painful arc even with light movement. Wow, so many possible tissue problems. They often overlap. Knowing your pattern helps your rehab team target the right issue. Let's move on to causes that come from the nervous system or muscle tone. After stroke, some muscles become overactive and tighten up. That's called spasticity. Here the arm is stiff and difficult to move. I remember that. We talked about it in the shoulder spasticity video. The muscle spasms didn't mean they were stronger. Right, spastic muscles are hyperactive but weak. When the arm hangs without support, nerves like the brachial plexus or suprascapular nerve can get stretched. When that happened to me, it felt like a burning or electric pain, pins and needles shooting down my arm, and weakness. Exactly, nerve pain feels like burning or electrical. Those are peripheral nerves. Sometimes the brain itself can be the source of pain. How does that work? Here, the pain comes from the brain's own sensory pathways, not the shoulder itself. You'll feel burning or freezing sensations, pain from light touch or temperature, and discomfort unrelated to movement. I remember we talked about that before. You said it was complex regional pain syndrome. Correct, Sarah. That is CRPS. You'll feel deep burning pain, swelling, sensitivity to light touch and cold temperature. The skin might look shiny, have color changes, and there's stiffness of the hand and fingers. Another source of shoulder pain comes from the neck or shoulder blade. A pinched nerve in the neck can mimic shoulder pain. I remember we talked about that in the video on neck pain. It's called cervical radiculopathy. I felt pain going from my neck, past the elbow, and into my fingers. It felt like pins and needles and got worse when I moved my neck. That's right, Sarah. It's called cervical radiculopathy. You feel the pain traveling along the nerve from your neck to the fingers it supplies. Nerve pain feels electrical, burning, and or pins and needles. The other hidden driver of shoulder pain is poor scapular mechanics, what we call scapular dyskinesis. After a stroke, the scapula often wings, shrugs early, or fails to rotate properly. What clues would tell me it might be problems with my scapula? You'll see visible winging, where your shoulder blade sticks out. There is uneven shoulder height or pain that eases when someone assists the scapula. Thank you, Dr. Moving Better. You went over the 12 causes. Is there anything I should worry about, or will all of this go away on its own? Most shoulder pain after stroke can be worked through safely, but a few warning signs mean don't wait. Get medical help right away. If you have sudden pain after a fall or trauma, it might mean a possible fracture. If you have new onset nerve pain or weakness, definitely see your doctor. If you have new stiffness, swelling, or warmth, you should get checked out for infection, blood clot formation, or bony heterotopic ossification, where bone grows outside of its normal location. Got it. Those are the red alert situations, where I shouldn't just try to push through. Exactly. While shoulder pain after stroke can be addressed safely, those red flags need quick attention. This really helps me see the patterns, but I've got more than one problem with my shoulder. How can I keep track of all of this? I know, Sarah. That was a lot of information. To help you, I created a cause finder checklist. It's a free printable guide that maps symptoms to likely causes and flags anything urgent. Download it using the link below and share it with your rehab team. In part two, we'll talk about practical, evidence-based ways to relieve post-stroke shoulder pain and one universal tip every survivor can start safely today. I'm ready for that one. Perfect. And if you found this helpful, 
hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss part two and future videos. Knowledge is power and the first step toward recovery. Remember, move daily and move smart.